Welcome to AC247, I'm Stephen Walker. The civil fraud trial of former President Donald Trump is underway in New York. The former president arrived in court surrounded by media and sat in court for opening statements. He's accused of inflating assets in fraudulent financial statements to get better terms on commercial real estate loans. New York's attorney general says Trump inflated his net worth by as much as $3.6 billion in three separate years between 2011 and 2021. Donald Trump and the other defendants have con committed persistent and repeated fraud. Last week, we proved that in our motion for summary judgment. Today, uh, we will prove our other claims. My message is simple. No matter how powerful you are, no matter how much money you think you may have, no one is above the law. And it is my responsibility and my duty and my job to enforce it. Trump and his companies could be forced to pay damages from profits made and the Trump family could be banned from serving as offices of business in the state. California Governor Gavin Newsom is appointing LaFonza Butler to complete the Senate term of the late Dianne Feinstein. Butler is currently the president of Emily's List, a group that works to elect Democratic women who support abortion rights. She will be the only black female Senate currently serving, and just the third in US history. Feinstein died last week at the age of 90. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy got over a major political hurdle this weekend. He may have helped temporarily avert a government shutdown, but now he may face another challenge from his own party. John Lawrence reports. While the Biden White House breathed a sigh of relief after a government shutdown was avoided before the Saturday night deadline. A needless crisis will have been averted, saving millions, millions of Americans uh, needless pain. Republican Representative Matt Gates of Florida was not happy with the end result because House Speaker Kevin McCarthy worked alongside Democrats to get a deal done. I do intend to file a motion to vacate against Speaker McCarthy this week. I think we need to this rip week. off the Band-Aid. I think we need to move on with new leadership that can be trustworthy. McCarthy says he's not surprised about the threat from Gates. This is personal with Matt. Matt voted against the most conservative ability to um, protect our border, secure our border. He's more interested in securing TV interviews than doing something. The stopgap bill signed over the weekend keeps the government running through November 17th, and Gates wants McCarthy gone long before then. The only way Kevin McCarthy is Speaker of the House at the end of this coming week is if Democrats bail him out. Now, they probably will. McCarthy, meanwhile, isn't backing down. Bring it on, let's get over with it, and let's start governing. If he's upset because he tried to push us in a shutdown and I made sure government didn't shut down, then let's have that fight. I'm John Lawrence reporting. To help Speaker McCarthy, some Republicans are floating the idea of getting help from Democrats. They want to revise the rules and make it harder for a single member of the House to remove the Speaker. But many Democrats distrust McCarthy and are willing to let pro-Trump Republicans deal with their own party problems. Well, uh, my vote beginning this term for, for Speaker of the House was for Hakeem Jeffries, and I do not intend on voting for a Republican Speaker of the House, but uh, I believe that it's up to the Republican conference to determine their own leadership and deal with their own problems. But it's not up to Democrats to save Republicans, so from themselves especially. Some Democrats have warned that changing the rules could have unintended consequences. House Minority Leader Jeffries will meet with the caucus members this week to lay out a game plan. Republican presidential candidate Ron DeSantis is distancing himself from the six-week abortion restriction he signed into law in Florida earlier this year, calling it a legislative issue in an interview with Bill Mayer. A six-week abortion ban, I don't get that either, because six weeks, like if you're, I know you say it's a case of conviction. If it's conviction, wouldn't it be moment of conception? That's what conviction is to me. Like if you believe the second, you know, before the guy can get the towel, there's a third person in that room. 
that. Well, no, I mean, it's, it's a, it's, so this is, it's a legislative issue, but, so they have to figure out what they think. And so the legislature identified the moment where there is a detectable heartbeat as the time where there's legal protections. Now, they did provide exceptions for all the difficult cases that you hear about. But basically, once there's a heartbeat, uh, it shouldn't be used as a form of birth control. DeSantis' comments come after he announced for the first time his support for a national 15-week abortion ban during Wednesday's Republican presidential primary debate. DeSantis has avoided endorsing a national abortion restriction and has often pointed to six weeks. Former President Jimmy Carter is now 99 years old. Carter's actual birthday was on Sunday. The White House displaying a three-tiered red, white and blue wooden cake on the North Lawn. It was topped with 39 candles to nod to Carter being the nation's 39th president. Thank you for joining us for AC 24-7. For more, go to advocatechannel.com and subscribe on the Advocate Channel YouTube page. For the Advocate Channel, I'm Stephen Walker. Thank mm -hmm. you.